Today on Dr. Phil. I believe my cousin is squandering her inheritance. Is this a love scam? You don't believe that this person's real? I don't. And what the hell are you doing helping her send him money? Is she getting married? I noticed a few red flags there. Or getting played? He gets arrested? He gets his money seized? He gets yellow fever? Was there any point that you said this just can't all happen to one guy? She's never met him. Are you wanting to send money now? He has contacted me saying he needs money to live. So how how much has she sent him? Are you getting sick at your stomach? Yep. Hang on. You won't believe. We have to add all that up. Your eyes. You send him. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. could you do with a million dollars? Maybe buy yourself a 2015 Porsche Spider for 929,000 bucks. Or how about a 2015 50-foot Prestige Yacht 500S for 999,000 bucks? According to the 2013 Census Bureau numbers, the income for the median household is 51.9. Even with earning a conservative interest, a typical U.S. family could live 20 years on a million bucks. But let me ask you something. If you had a million bucks, would you consider giving it away? Not to a needy family member, but to the love of your life, who you had never laid eyes on. <laughs> Yeah, you guessed it. I'm talking about yet another woman that has come to me asking for help to bring home her man who is stuck overseas and needs her money to survive, her money to get home to her arms. Now, I have done many possible love scam shows, but this one, well, it breaks the record, or should I say the bank. My first guest, Sarah, was twice divorced and was looking for someone to love her. She went on a dating website on September 13th, 2013. She met Chris Olson. For the past 17 months, Sarah and Chris Olson have been in a relationship. She says she is completely in love with him and hopes someday to marry this man that she has never met. She hopes that I will bring them together. Take a look. Despite my two marriages, I still believe in love. So I joined an online dating service. An attractive person came on there and said, you look like you wouldn't hurt a fly. I said, wow, this guy's really handsome. I can't believe he's talking to me. <laughs> he told me early on that he was a widower and that he had two daughters and he was on a business trip to South Africa. He and I started talking on the phone relatively quickly. Gosh, I'd say three or four hours a day. His name is Christopher Piolo Olson. He's from Milan, Italy, and moved to the United States about 18 years ago. Chris has a way with words. <laughs> he'll say, how is my queen doing today? Or he'll say, how is my flower today? I hope she's been watered. He's very poetic when he talks to me. He's just spectacular. Chris and I have discussed getting married. I believe Chris does consider me his wife. Chris will make a comment like, Mrs. Olson, I love you and I can't wait to be with you again. I've actually never met Chris in person, but I am definitely in love with Chris. So who exactly is this mystery man that Sarah is so in love with and why does he need her financial support in order to just get home? 
Chris currently is in Africa. He got in a huge amount of trouble with the government and asked me to help. I've given Chris money for several reasons. His credit card was stolen. He needed money for calling cards, hotel bills, lawyers. I have sent money to his nanny. His visa expired. The money that I sent was stolen. I've sent Chris money thousands of times in June 2014. Chris was in prison, falsely accused of money laundering. I sold an apartment building and I sent $550,000 to Chris to get him out of jail. I've sent him money in South Africa, Nigeria, and Benin. He assured me that when he gets home, he's going to pay me back every dime. He's made five or six attempts to come back to the U.S. to meet me. Every time they arrest him and they put him in jail, and then they want more money. It's been like a roller coaster for me. I'm going to have to continue to send him this money until he's free. I have questioned several times whether or not this is a scam. I am 95% certain that Chris is telling me the truth, that this is all legit. I am hoping that Dr. Phil can unite Chris and I. You, you guys hit it off. Instantly, right? Yes. How long was it before he professed his love for you? Gosh, it must have been seven, eight weeks in. Within a few months, he was writing beautiful emails to you. He said, quote, I have already fallen in love with you. And yes, I'm so in love with you. But I want to start by saying that I miss you. And you have no idea how much I love you. I know you don't need another reminder because I tell you every time how much I love you. That was kind of music to your ears. You'd just come out of a divorce. Yeah, it had been a long time since I'd had love, you know, so. Sarah says she and Chris talked every day for hours on end. Now, he was born in Italy. Correct. But lived in the United States, right? Yeah, he moved here 18 years ago. Did he sound... Italian or American or what? When I first started talking to him, he sounded Italian. Now his accent's kind of changed. I don't know if he's adapted to where he's at. Which is? In Benin. Benin, Africa? Yeah. Uh -huh. so here's the profile, uh, according to Sarah. He's 46 years old, born in 1966. He had a wife, Debbie, and tragically she was killed uh, in a car accident in Italy. Uh, he has two daughters, heartbroken when a girlfriend cheated on him and stole his property. He had a home in Kansas, but it was destroyed in a tornado. He moved to Gainesville, Florida, and he went to Africa to buy gems for his grandmother's company and ship them to the U.S. And he had a nanny uh, that cared for his daughters. Correct. Right. And his mother took the daughters to live with her in Milan, Italy. Correct. And he's currently living with his attorney, but he can't leave there until he has taxes that are paid. Yes, they have his passport. Now, you've tried to get together a number of times, right? Correct. But things come up. He's, his credit cards were stolen. Correct. And he contracted yellow fever? He did. Uh, he was on his way to see you, right? Correct. And got arrested at the airport? Yeah, and I was talking to him on the phone before he got arrested. They took him down? or? Yeah, because it, the phone just went dead. And then it took several days before I heard And you could again. hear the overhead speakers at the airport announcing flights in the background, right? Yes. And then radio silence for like two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, he sold his father's property in South Africa? Yes. And did he get a lot of money out of that? Yes, and I don't know how much. He didn't tell me. Are we talking like $10,000 or a million dollars? I think it's more like a million and something. Okay, yeah. and what happened to that? He couldn't wire it into the United States from South Africa. So they told him that Nigeria had bigger banks and they, they're wealthier than South Africa and can send funds that way. So that's why he ended up in Nigeria, was to do that. And then ever since then, it's just been nothing but trouble. For him. Well, what happened to the money? Part of it got stolen. Who stole the money? The security guy that was supposed to be helping him send the money. So they've arrested him and then arrested Chris for the same reason, saying money laundering was involved. So. Was there any point along the way here that you said, 
come on, it just can't all happen to one guy. I've thought that a lot of times. He gets arrested at the airport, he gets yellow fever, he gets his money seized. I mean... I know. Now, Sarah's cousin, Crystal, believes Sarah is caught in a love scam. But that hasn't stopped her from helping Sarah send money to Chris Olson. Why would she do that? We're going to find out when we come back. I believe my cousin is squandering her inheritance. We knew it was a scam, and we tried to convince her of this. If Sarah continues sending Chris money, she's going to have nothing left. When my parents passed away, they left me an inheritance. This is my house. My property. It's 13 acres in total. My house is 7,400 square feet. My favorite part of the house is like a sunroom. It's, it has the biggest glass on it. You can see the mountains and everything. So this is my basement slash game room. I don't think Chris knows how much property I have or how big this house is. I believe that I've spent a million dollars of my inheritance on Chris. I would love Chris to be here with his two daughters and to sit at this table with my family. There's just enough room for all of us. Well, Sarah says she is head over heels in love with a man named Chris Olson. Now, Sarah has never met Chris Olson, but that hasn't stopped her from sending him a whole lot of money. In fact, we have a whole lot of receipts here, uh, and these are all receipts um, from where you have sent him money and you've kept all of these because he has said that he can and will pay you back every cent yes now even though sarah's cousin crystal emailed the show seeking my help in giving sarah a wake-up call she also admits to helping sarah send money to this chris olson person take a look I believe my cousin is squandering her inheritance by sending it to a love scammer. The relationship between Sarah and Chris did move quickly. We come to find out a couple months into the relationship, she had sent about $50,000. Sarah is a gullible person only because she has a big heart. She wants to be loved, and it's a character flaw. Sarah finally confessed that she had sent Chris over a million dollars two months ago. I truly believe that it could be more than a million dollars. Sarah would always be defensive when we would approach her, stating that this was a scam. Sarah does believe he's still real. Sarah came to myself and my husband to help send large sums of money to Chris in Africa. We knew it was a scam, and we tried to convince her of this. We've sent, on Sarah's behalf, 20 transactions for a total of $40,000. If Sarah continues sending Chris money, she's going to have nothing left and she's going to be in a very rough predicament. Okay, I'm glad you're here. You don't believe that this person's real. I don't. And what the hell are you doing helping her send him money? I love her. She's not just my cousin. She is absolutely my best friend. And when the money needs to get sent, it becomes so desperate, it affects her. And it gets bad. Is that true? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you wanting to send money now? You do want to send him money now. You told us yesterday. Yeah, he's, he has contacted me yesterday and the day before saying that he needs money to live and pay his attorney right now. Uh, how much does he need right now? 2000 Until the bigger money comes in, the last remaining of the VAT tax that he needs. From you? Yeah. And you've, you've helped her? Half. Yeah. With this. Family and friends in Montana have sent approximately $250,000 on her behalf. Why? Because Western Union and MoneyGram have cut her off. But family and friends in Louisiana sent approximately $28,000. Friends and family in Nevada sent approximately $40,000. Friends and family in California sent approximately $150,000 to Chris Olson. I mean, just look at this. There's just money been going back from all over the country out there. But you don't even know the whole story. No, the apparently I don't. No, you're getting ready <laughs> to. Um, I just want to just kind of unfold this whole thing just so sure. we all have a okay. clear picture of this. On 
September 13th of 2013, you meet Chris Olson online. Okay, within three months, you start sending him money. Nanny, cell phone, taxes, hotel, and penalty for expired visa. You send him $108,485.14. Then, between January and April of 2014, to pay nanny, hotels, food, and clothes, you send him another $108,950. This is a high-priced nanny. <laughs> and this boy apparently eats like a wolf. That's a lot of money. Then. He's in jail. You got to bail him out, pay taxes, attorney fees, hotel, more food. $878,489.94. Are you getting sick at your stomach? Yep. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> July to September. Value-added tax, hotels, food, more attorney fees, quarter million dollars. October to December, more on this value-added tax. He now has yellow fever. You got to treat that, of course, hotel. He's still eating. He's still paying his attorney, who he's now living with, right? So $23,000 for these two months here. You're slowing down. Why? Because I'm running out of money. January of this year, $60,000. Now, we have to add all that up. cents. Over 17 months. Sarah's daughter Candace is planning her wedding in a few months, but says her mother can't help with the expenses because all of her money goes to Chris Olson. Candace joins us next, and we're going to find out why her mother has so run out of money that she started to get it from some really strange places. We'll be right back. I have told my mom to stop sending him money numerous times. I don't think it's real, I think it's a love scam. I'm planning on getting married in six months, but she does struggle every month to make big payments on my wedding because of this whole Chris situation. I am financially strapped from sending money to Chris. I borrowed $40,000 from Loan Sharks. I was about four months late on my payment. Two of them broke into the house. Luckily, my son walked up the stairs and saw them and ran out. I'm not sure if they were trying to rob me or if they were just planning on scaring me. They are both paid in full. Sarah has been dating a man that says he is Chris Olson. She met him online 17 months ago and, as we have just seen, has already sent this person over $1.4 million. Sarah's daughter Candace believes that Chris Olson is a complete fraud who is playing with her mother's emotions. About a month after my mom met Chris, she had told me she had sent him money. I felt a little shocked. I think part of me believes that she's in love with him, but there's another part of me that thinks that she's in love with love. As far as I know, my mom has sent Chris over a million dollars. I have told my mom to stop sending him money numerous times. I don't think it's real. I think it's a love scam. I'm planning on getting married in six months. And my mom is going to help with a lot of the wedding expenses. But she does struggle every month to make big payments on my wedding because of this whole Chris situation. The situation with Chris is really affecting my mom's health. My mom has multiple sclerosis. Stress can cause multiple sclerosis to become worse and possibly have more problems in the future. If I found out this was a scam, I would be very pissed off because my mom is the most awesome woman ever and she would do anything for anybody. Well, Candace, you're concerned about your mother. Yeah. Would, I didn't know any of that stuff. 
were you shocked to see the scope of what we're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. You're a little shocked to see it all in one place, right? Yeah. There is some text between Sarah and Chris. Uh, this is an exchange February 6th of 2015. Uh, Sarah, I love you. Hope you got the 24950 Chris, yeah, babe, got it. Morning. Sarah, okay, did you give it to the government? Chris, 24-8, yes, everything, babe, believe me. Sarah, did Mr. Blank keep 150 then? Chris, yes, babe. Sarah, did you give them the other 10,000? Where was that? That's a lot of money to just turn up missing, you know. Chris, yes, I know, but you should, none of this money was spent as waste. Everything is towards the 85,000, that's the VAT tax. Sarah, you keep saying that, but honey, that doesn't tell me anything really, and I have hid nothing from you, so you should be able to tell me. Chris, I swear I'm not hiding anything from you. All the money is other. Sarah, so what are we at now, honey? If all money has gone, there should be, including 10,000, around 52 or so. Chris, no, babe. Sarah, we're at 76,000 minus the 10, so without it, that, Chris, no, we're still at 42. Sarah, we are at, question, Chris, 42 minus 85. Sarah, do you mean 85 minus 42? Chris, so 43,000 more. Sarah, needed. Chris, yes. Okay, well, won't have any more till the timeshare gets a hold of me, so hang in there, my love, okay? I love you. Chris, love you more. Okay, did anything jump out there to, to you? Because I, I noticed a few red flags there myself. Um, <laughs> in, There's a lot of red flags. In, in, you're selling your timeshare now. You're liquidating more assets, right? Well, it's what I had on the market for a long time. Well, let's look at some of the emails between this attorney. Uh, it's Gideon. How do you pronounce his Obama. name? He says, good day, Miss Sarah. I'm Mr. Gideon Agbana, attorney to Mr. Chris Olson. This is to inform you, as requested from Mr. Chris Olson, that he has been in the Nigeria NDLEA custody. Now, this is a national agency down there for the case of money laundering against him. He mentioned Mr. Chris Olson's name. I tried all my best, and the case was finalized today, and the Nigeria government found Mr. Chris Olson guilty. This man's an attorney, and do you notice he doesn't communicate very well? No, he doesn't. Madam, you have to let us know if this funds is available. Gonna get it here to us. I don't know what the law is down there. You don't, don't need to know law. what the law is. The man can't make a sentence. <laughs> now, remember those love letters from Chris Olson that we saw earlier? Well, we're going to take a close look at them, and I'm going to reveal what we found when we come back. Chris and I text several times a day. Usually he's texting me and asking me for money. Right now he's asking for $2,000. He says, can't you send me little funds as I did not take from the $24,950 anymore, babe. I said, honey, I have $200 to last me till the end of the month. And then I said, I love you the most, this my sexy king. He says, any update yet, Sarah? And I said, no, honey. He says, why, Sarah? We need more funds to proceed on what's going on here. I will send him whatever he needs if we don't get closure to this soon. Sarah has sent over $1.4 million to Chris Olson, the man she hopes to someday marry. There's only one catch. They have not met in person yet. Now, Sarah's cousin, Crystal, and daughter, Candace, believe Sarah uh, may well have been scammed by her online lover over the past 17 months. But Sarah says that her heart has told her that Chris Olson is real 
and is the man of her dreams. Let's, I, I want to take a look at these letters that he sent you, because you admit he touched your heart with these things. He said, hey, babe, I want to start by saying that I miss you, and you have no idea how much I love you. I know you don't need another reminder, because I tell you every time how much I love you. But I do, and that is my only way to show you. And I know my simple words can never compare. From day one, I knew there was something in you that no other woman had. You know, that's, any woman wants to hear that, right? And apparently a lot of women do hear that. Um, because I searched the internet and that exact letter, look at it, word for word. That love letter comes from scam alert website, pigbusters.net. He didn't write that. It's a form letter that scammers use. Then here's another passage. You are the most amazing woman I have ever known. Thinking back to the strange when we'll met, how we grow so close in just a few short days, and wife, it makes me smile and fall all over for you again. You are the most amazing woman I have ever met. Thinking back to the strange when well met. And you, you see, even the mistakes are the same. Even the first one in January, the first time I heard you say the words, I love you to me, here it is, the first time I heard you say the words, I love you to me, from the very beginning. Honestly, if someone was sending me that much money, I would love them too. But I think my mom wants to be in love so bad that she doesn't she isn't open to realizing that there's bad people out there that don't actually care about anybody but themselves. What do you think about everything that you've heard so far? It's overwhelming. You know, yeah. the, the excuses for not meeting you, credit cards stolen in Africa, bank froze assets, yellow fever, arrested at airports, expired visas, stuck in Nigeria in custody, sold father's property in South Africa, money was stolen arrested and convicted of money laundering in Nigeria, can't leave until Nigerian governors paid value added tax. All of these things, all of these excuses that he's given you. You know, we looked in to these things, okay? We looked into uh, like sold father's property in Africa and money was stolen. There's no record of that. There was no there was no property sold. There's absolutely no record of it whatsoever. Arrested and convicted of money laundering in Nigeria. We, look, there, there would be an arrest record, right? There would be a jail record. There would be bail record. All these are records. There's no record. Can't leave Nigeria uh, government till the value added tax is paid. That's just false. There is no law that they restrict your travel because you don't pay a 5% value added tax. That's just simply not there. We've talked to them, that's just simply not the case. Okay, I'm gonna tell you when we come back from a break, I'm gonna tell you what happened when I sent a producer to knock on the door at the address where Chris Olson's nanny allegedly resides. This nanny that you, Wanda. you paid for? Wanda. Wanda. Yeah. Yeah. We, we track this person down, knocked on the door. There was an answer. We'll tell you what happened when we come back. Now, Chris Olson told Sarah when he originally went to Africa, he left his two daughters with a nanny in Ohio. He said her name was Wanda and she had moved to California. Well, based on his information, we found a woman who fit the profile of who he claimed was his nanny. 
We sent a producer to talk to her, and this is what happened. I'm at an apartment complex in Southern California to determine whether or not one of the occupants knows Chris Olson. Chris supposedly told Sarah that he had hired a nanny by the name of Wanda to take care of his two children in Ohio. So we hired a private investigator who told us that there was a woman named Wanda in Ohio who was recently moved here to this apartment complex behind me. So I'm taking this picture of Chris Olson inside with me and asking her whether or not A, she recognizes him and B, whether or not she was in fact the nanny to his two children. Actually, with the Dr. Phil show, there's a woman by the name of Sarah okay. who is worried about her boyfriend. His name is Chris Olson. Somehow, your name came up as potentially somebody that would know him or knew him. But does that name mean anything to you? No. No, not at all. Can I show you a picture of what he maybe sure. looks like? No. Doesn't mean anything to you? No. I, I mean, I've only been out here in California for. Less than a year. And where were you before that? West Virginia. Okay, so you never spent any time in Ohio? No. No. Were you ever a nanny? No. No. Just so it's clear, absolutely no. Never heard of a, a Chris Olson, never saw this guy before, and never lived in Ohio? No. Okay. I thank you so much. Okay, um, we, we researched this person it's the only person of any description in california that comes even close she doesn't Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go
know any Chris Olson. She's never been a nanny. Just absolutely false. So here's what we found about Chris Olson. Um, first off, there is no Chris Olson with a birth date that he gave you of 10 1966. Ever. There's, no, there's nobody by that name ever born on that date anywhere that we can find, ever, period. Chris Olson's phone number is a Google Voice phone number that's untraceable. Uh, his IP address uh, for one of Chris Olson's emails originates in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, the other email IP address uh, originates in that town in Benin, and the IB address for Chris Olson and this Gideon Agbana is the same internet provider at the same location. Portions of emails found on other websites were plagiarized, which we told you. Database reveals no daughters, no Tracy Olson, no Angela Olson. No passports exist for them. As for his mother, uh, Gina Olson, the only Gina Olson who lived in Milan, um, is 16 years younger than Chris. So she could not be the mother of a 46-year-old man. She's 30. All right, next, following an intensive search and help from our social media community, we have found the man in the pictures Chris Olson sent to Sarah. More about that after the break. Chris Olson claimed he was arrested in Nigeria and was stuck in Benin, Africa. Well, joining us now via Polycom is Nigerian Ambassador Jeffrey uh, Tenalabi and Benin Ambassador uh, Omar Arana. Let me start with uh, Ambassador Tenalabi. You want to make sure that people understand that uh, this is not a brush to paint Nigeria with, that this is certainly not something that characterizes uh, Nigerians as a whole, correct? Nigerians are hardworking people. They're very enterprising and um, uh, the vast majority very honest, but a few as in every country you have this sort of thing. Ambassador uh, Arano, can you uh, tell us in, in terms of Benin, your country is quite sophisticated, correct? My country is a democratic country and uh, there is uh, an issue where few bad apple create situation like this. I, I, I really thank you both. These very uh, busy ambassadors care enough about you as an individual and, and about Americans that, that they want them to understand that if, if, if people are, are telling these kinds of stories about being trapped in their countries and all of this happening, to just simply not believe that. And you gentlemen have been very kind in taking your time uh, to do that and to let us know that. So thank you both for being here today to set the record straight. Yes, thank you, as part of our extensive investigation to find Chris Olson, the man who wooed Sarah online, we reached out to you, Dr. Phil viewers, for help in finding the identity of the real man whose photo was used to perpetuate a scam. Now, I want to be very clear. This man is a victim in this. He is a victim because a stranger stole his image and used it to defraud Sarah. We searched high and low. We could not locate him. We searched and searched and could not find him. So we put Chris Olson's picture on the Dr. Phil Facebook page asking, do you know this man? Please have him contact us. So we spent weeks trying to find him with investigators and everything else. Well, of course, the Dr. Phil fans, in a very short period of time, with all of their friends and followers, went to work, and in two and a half hours... <laughs> uh, 
and over 700 comments later, the man was found and we talked to him. And we, we definitely want to protect his privacy, uh, but he definitely wanted to help Sarah. His name is not Chris Olson, um, and his wife did not die in a car accident, but these are some pictures that I can show you of him that are real and more contemporary. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now. Um, it's kind of overwhelming. I just feel betrayed. You have been. You have been betrayed. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Do, do you believe that this man is not real? Yeah. Do you believe that you've been scammed here? Yes. Let me tell you, it, it can happen to anybody. Also joining us today, uh, FBI Special Agent Daryl Foxworth is here. He has been an FBI agent for 29 years, and he is also FBI's Public Affairs Coordinator. She is not alone here. This happens to a lot of people, correct? Unfortunately, there are thousands of Sarahs out there. The FBI has what's called the Internet Crime Complaint Center, and the Internet Crime Complaint Center is a clearinghouse where information concerning internet facilitated crimes can be reported to the FBI at ic3.gov. When it came to online dating scams, in 2012 we had about 4,000 reported offenses of these online dating scams. In 2013, that increased to 6,400. Now, that's about a 40% increase, but when you look at the total dollar loss, it was $81 million in 2013. Wow. So these are very high impact, high financial losses for each one of these instances. Do you catch any of these people? You know, we do catch some, but the problem is, is that there's just so much of it going on. We basically can't arrest our way out of this, out of this problem. So that's why it's important to, to work with uh, you know, people like you uh, to get the information out educate the public so that they don't become a victim to this scam. If you believe you have been the victim of an internet love scam, go to the FBI's special website, ic3.gov, and there is a specific pattern that these folks follow, and you go to uh, drphil.com and we're going to have a list of all the things that they do to get money out of you. I'd like to thank all of my guests today, uh, especially Nigerian Ambassador Jeffrey uh, Tenelabi and Benin Ambassador Omar uh, Aruna. Uh, a special thank you to FBI Special Agent Daryl Foxworth. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Hi, Sarah, can you see me? Yeah. And I'm not the man that scammed you. I am a normal guy. I love my family and I love my, my, my girlfriend and, and I'm truly, truly, truly really sorry that this has happened to you. Uh, I, I appreciate you being kind enough to talk to me. It was very nice meeting you, Sarah. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. I just talked to the man in the photos. His voice didn't even match the voice I've been talking to. I'm feeling really betrayed and, and hurt and I'm never going to get that money back. It's gone. I am ready to move on with my life. I just hope this doesn't happen to anybody else, ever.